Hello and welcome to Up The Villa podcast. Today's episode is a Leeds preview for Saturday. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. You'll help us grow. We're virg- virtually getting towards 2K, which is massive for us. We've got massive news and we start hitting that number as well. Um, if you can just subscribe um, and get involved in everything that we talk about. So good news on the 23rd of May against Chelsea at home. We're all going home. How good does that sound? We're all going to be back in Villa Park. Well, 10,000 of us. Uh, so hopefully one of us or a couple of us get picked out to go and we can start sinking them purity ales back at Villa Park because I know I can't wait to <laughs> just walk up them whole end steps and sit in my seat and just watch that team play football, never take it for granted ever again, watching watching Aston Villa ever again. Um, so let's just get a few views on it. What are you feeling about that then, Ryan? Mate, I'm, I'm fucking buzzing, mate. We are, <laughs> we are going home, boys. We're going back to B6. And Robinson flipping out. We can almost taste that purity ale. I know. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's such great news. Um, personally, the Chelsea game, um, I think I'd like us just to write this season off and all go back together, all 40,000 of us. I think that atmosphere would be such emotionally charged. And imagine if it's under the lights as well, that first game back. So, um if we got offered a ticket, I'd probably take it though. So, <laughs> hey, <you don't laughs> but um, of course I wouldn't. Of course I wouldn't. But uh, yeah, I'm optimistic. I'm feeling positive. It's it's good news. But there's still a lot of work to be done out there. Like you know, look at this pod for example. Like Seb, you know, he's got to be integrated back into school. You've got to get back on the scissors, and Justin's got a business to pick up and and, and run again. And and he's going to need massive support from the community. So, but there is a bit of light at the end of the tunnel, and. Um, I'm buzzing for it, buzzing for it. Yeah, it's just it's just huge. His announcement yesterday was the best news we've had in about a year, isn't it, really? So um, it's all got to be good. And hopefully, you know, we get it done. Um, me and Ryan are obviously at the top because we've got, oh, obviously, we're throwing off our new jacket. So I've got a little acorns, cheeky night jacket, Ryan smashed it with his training. Yeah, full, on, full on vintage 90s, this one, mate. Classic. Uh, so absolutely love that one. Love that one. Smart jacket that is. Seb's gone up a level. He's hired an office coming from an <laughs> office in Cornwall. So, <laughs> what, are you, what are your thoughts about it? What thoughts about the office or thoughts about Villa <laughs> going back? Yeah, no, I can't wait to go back. The news yesterday was was all that we needed to hear. Really, I think it was the feel good factor that we were waiting for. I mean, obviously, it's still a long way to go, so we can't. We can't hedge our bets just yet because, as we know, a lot of things can change in the meantime. But we've got something to work towards now and it gives us that light at the end of the tunnel. I can't wait to be back. And I'll be back in Ted's on my lunch break getting that cheese and bean potato. What are your thoughts, Justin? <laughs> yeah, hopefully, mate, definitely. Yeah, I'm chuffed. I think it gave everyone a boost yesterday, didn't it? The news we, we all wanted. I know it's going to be a long just to get out of it but it, it, we're all going the right way now so this is hopefully the worst it's going to be now and it's going to be good and yeah obviously chuffed to get back to Villa Park I think we're all desperate to get back there um, I, I'm sure we're riding a bit really I think it'd be much nicer now really to just say let's just forget this season um, and, and let's all get back there first game and next season start it off again I'm not sure how we'd be that chuffed if we was in a away game the last game of the season because there's going to be a lot of fans that you know, all the home games are going to they're going to maybe potentially have ten thousand in. But if we was away last game of the season, we'd probably find that a little bit unfair because it it probably is a little bit, isn't it? But you know, I think we've just got to take the, the wins when we get them. And this set sounds like a win at the moment. A lot of water to go under the bridge, but all positive now going forward. I think I think somebody said earlier on Twitter there's the fourteen clubs have got to vote on it first for it to happen. So with with that in mind, that there's going to be certain team's going to be away and not get the benefit of a home crowd. I, I can't possibly see it maybe just starting next season, which I think would be fair for everyone. But like Ryan said, if you offer me a ticket now, I'll snatch your hands off. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, d- definitely. So, I mean, we've got Leeds on Saturday. Um, and obviously, just thinking about that game before I watched Leeds tonight, I was a little bit worried. And then I've just watched Leeds annihilate Southampton. And now I'm very, very worried. <laughs> Um, they were 
fantastic in that game today. Um, I do, you know, Southampton's defending was a little bit suspect at times, but Rafinha up against Elmo. I'm a bit worried. Um, I'm worried about that. Um, worried about our midfield. Hopefully, we're going to have some changes. Um, Ryan, what what are your thoughts on on Leeds then? Yeah, like I said in the uh, on the fan reaction, I think we do need to get some energy and some legs into the midfield, don't we? Um, Almo's going to need a bit of help, and so I think Trezor guy has got to come on that right hand side. I think we get the camber in for a bit of bite and a bit of energy in the middle. Uh, we touched on Ramsey, didn't we? How he likes to get on the ball, so maybe a chance for him. And um, I don't know, thinking out loud, maybe maybe Torre in at number ten if he's gonna if he's gonna drop or rest Barkley, take him out the firing line a bit. Maybe he could step up into that number ten role. It'd be interesting to see to see that. So yeah, just energy and legs we're gonna need big time. And to turn up to start with is the main. Concern from the off, yeah, from the, the off to, to be there from the first whistle, which we're gonna have to be. Um, Seb, uh, yeah, like like Ryan alluded to, I mean, Leeds, let's not you know beat around the bush here. Leeds are a very, very good team as they showcased tonight against Southampton. They can turn up, and when they turn up, they really do play some good football, and it's exciting to watch. If from a neutral's perspective, I think if we were to be on the end of that, it could be quite scary, especially with our performances in recent weeks. If we take our time to work ourselves into the game, then I think Leeds will take us to the sword. And if they get an early goal, then I'd be quite worried. Um, look, it will be an open game. It will be an even game. They can expose themselves at the back and we like to sit back and defend. If we can catch them on the counter attack and get a goal, then that could open the play up uh, tremendously I mean who knows what's going to happen it's going to be a good game for sure I think we just need to 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 find our feet a little bit at the minute and just just try and find that little bit of magic that little bit of form that we've showed obviously before the Covid issue really I was watching some of the highlights of some of the games back earlier and we were frightening at times you know I was watching the West Brom match the Arsenal obviously Liverpool we were we were so good going forward, and we just we just lacking that little bit of a spark for some reason. Um, Justin, what are your views on Leeds? Yeah, I agree with what everybody said. Really, I, I, you know, going back to how we we played the start of the season, we were playing without fear, wasn't we? We was almost not not really caring what the opposition put out, who they're playing against. It didn't really matter. We were just so good to watch, and we do seem to have sort of hit a bit of a an impasse at the moment. We, we, you know, form dropped and players out of form and Jack obviously missing. It does feel a little bit negative at the moment, but I, I, I do think, you know, I do think he'll he'll shake it up again on Saturday, on Saturday. I think he's got to, really. I think he's, he's persevered now with the midfield three for long enough and they haven't really, you know, given him what he wanted in return. You know, he's given them a lot of chances and they haven't um, done it. So I think Barkley probably will let, be left out. He might leave another one out. I quite like Ryan's idea actually playing playing the, the Maverick Torore in the ten because he's got that bit of sonic about him. I think he can open a team up. Um, yeah, the right back does worry me a little bit. I'm a big Elmo fan, but um, you know he could be isolated on that right side. So there is lots of issues for Dean to look at this week and to, to assess. So you know. When that team news drops on Saturday, I think we'll all know. We're thinking I'll be amazed now if we don't have at least one or two changes, maybe even three or four. There's players there chomping at the bits coming. Sanson and Ramsey, really, when they've had little cameos, have looked really up for it. And, and I think now they've probably done enough to say, let, let me start, let me take the shirt. And the ones that haven't done it can sit on the bench and, and try and think about how they're going to get back in the team, which is what really it should be all about, isn't it? Definitely. That's going to now bring me on to hopefully Dino is going to do a job on Bielsa. Um, you know, in the press, it's Bielsa this, Bielsa that. It's He's a great coach. You know, he has done really well with Leeds. He gets them playing really good football, a different brand of football to what a lot of fans probably haven't seen in the Premier League before. He's, the way he's got them playing, um, it's, it's a breath of fresh air at times. But what I want to talk about is the job Dino's done, which goes under the radar and doesn't get talked about as much. 
Why, why do you feel that is, Ryan? Um, I don't know. I really don't know because Bielsa, look, he is playing a nice brand of football. And, and, if it, and if that was us coming up last season, doing the same, then we'd all, we'd all be delighted. I just think it's just a bit cringy the way the media jumped on it. That, that, that's, the only, that's the only real issue I've got with it, really. Uh, but do you know? Uh, I don't know, really. I don't know why he hasn't received the prize he has, to be honest. Um, he's, he's done an absolutely wonderful job. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why, why, why it's not being humped on us. I just, I just think he, Dino, you know, we've said at times that he should, he should get more credit for the job that he has done, really. Um, you know, what he's, what he's been able to do for Villa, turn them around where, at time, you know, our fan base at times, he's not a great fan base. And, Dino managed to salvage us and, and get us promoted and play a good brand of, and we survived when a lot of fans were on his back last year as well. And now we're reaping the rewards. I, I, for me, I'd just, I'd just like to see a little bit more praise for Dino. Um, we all know on this podcast, Seb has, you know, he's got a, a soft touch for a few of her teams, few of her managers, some he doesn't. Um, so, what's your view on uh, Leeds and um, Bielsa, Sev? I mean, look, Bielsa plays a good brand of football. Okay, he's he's one of those where he's not afraid of any team, and he's not he sticks to his ways. He knows what he's good at, and he does it well. I think there's a case to be made where he could be quite naive at times. I think there's been games this season, my mind casts back to when they played Old Trafford, United away, where they find themselves 4-1, 4-2 down, but they're still intent on going forward and that ended up costing them at the back. They're a unique team, okay? I don't think you ever know what you're going to get with them. Every game is different. They could turn up and score six. They could turn up and concede six. That's just the way it is. They've got some quality players, like you've mentioned, Rafinha. They've got the best out of Bamford as well. I think Stuart Dallas at the back is a real threat going forward. He seems to produce most weeks, uh, whether that's a goal or assist or an attacking phase of play. I'm a big fan of Dallas. But um, going back to what you were saying about why Dean Smith hasn't had the plaudits he has, I'm all right with that. I don't mind the fact that we're not being plastered all over the media. I think Dino goes about his job. He does it well, but he does it discreetly. I don't think it bothers him that we're, you know, front line and centre of every paper. We do our job well. It doesn't put us in the spotlight. So it almost takes the pressure off us a bit. I like the way that Dean Smith operates. Um, Justin, do you want to add anything on the Bielsa-Dean Smith comparison? Yeah, I'd probably like Seb, really. You know, Smith, well, they're both. I don't think Bielsa really courts a lot of um, publicity, does he? He just sort of gets it because of how he is. You know, I don't really get the... He can talk to the players in English, but he can't do a press conference in English after the game. You know, he's, he's an odd character, isn't he? But, you know, his track record speaks for itself. While he's not really won leagues and stuff in his, in his career, you know, there isn't many top managers around the world that haven't got a lot of good things to say about him. And... At the end of the day, he got Leeds promoted and he's doing a good job in the Premier League. Um, it's going to be a tough game, isn't it? Uh, Smith uh, is a very good coach, we know that. Um, and he's been through these little lulls before and he'll get us out a bit again. I have absolutely no doubt about it whatsoever. You know, we've just got to stick with him, stick with the team. I'd like to see a bit more support for some of the players that are not in good form because, you know, it's amazing. A player drops out of form and he gets it's absolutely annihilated and I put it on Twitter today I just wish sometimes fans had tried back players unreservedly and it, it seems to be an impossibility really with the fan base every every team needs a scapegoat we're in poor form Barkley's now the scapegoat he's the one that's it's all collapsing around and so it'd be nice to see a bit more support for players that aren't playing that well I, I'm, I'm never I'll never ever ever believe that a player goes out of that pitch trying not to do his best it sometimes just doesn't happen. We've all played sports, maybe not nowhere near that level, but some days, no matter how much you try, it just doesn't happen, does it? So I think we've just got to carry on backing them unreservedly, like we all do. I think another thing on Barker, which I thought about today, actually, is that everybody's been fuming about his reaction coming off the pitch. And initially, you're thinking he's fuming about 
he's been brought off the pitch, but maybe he was he's actually fuming about the way he's he's, he's been playing in that that's game. Do you know exactly, what I mean? Oh, exactly. That's yeah, hundred percent. That's exactly what I think. I think he comes off because he he wants to be the he wants to be the main man, doesn't he? Yeah. He come to Villa, or at the moment he's a drop down to Villa because of where Chelsea have been over the last few seasons. So he's come to Villa to play week in week out. And he's come to him to be the main man. That's what he's come for. It's, you know, he wants to get back in the England squad, and he wants everybody to say, "Look at me! I'm I'm Ross Barkley. I'm a top top player." And when he gets dragged off game after game after game, sixty minutes, seventy minutes, he's annoyed because he's. He, I'm, I'm hoping inside he's, thinking, he's screaming, going, "I'm better than this! I'm better than this!" I, you know, it's really frustrating to me that I can't show it. That's what I would hope. Yeah. Um, so another little rumor that's come out today is that we. are Front runners to sign Sander Berg from Sheffield United. For me, I think it would be a brilliant signing. Um, normally, this is Seb's department on this podcast. So, what are your thoughts, Seb? Ah, Sander Berg. I don't know. <laughs> In all honesty, I mean, he. He he joined Sheffield in January last year and he had a really good few opening games. I think Sheffield fans were really starting to rave about him. They saw his top qualities. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, he found himself injured. So he dropped out the team for a bit, came back in, won his place back and was playing well. But the difficulty is that he was playing in a team that was full of confidence at the time was perhaps, some might argue, overperforming for where they should be in the league. So, of course, you're going you're gonna to get plaudits for overperforming as such. However, he has played his part in what has been, let's not beat around the bush, an awful Sheffield United team this season. You know, they've, they've not been on the front competing really at all. It's only in the last few weeks that they've picked up a few points that could possibly see them with a glimmer of hope. And I think every player, however good you are, has to take some responsibility from that. But I mean, look, players end up getting relegated that are Premier League top quality players. Like Ben Godfrey Godfrey for Everton. He went down with Norwich, but has obviously come back and shown just how good he is. So I think if we could get him for the right price, then I'd be going, yeah, go for it. Add squad depth which is what we've all been crying out for. As long as he doesn't replace Douglas Louise, which I don't think he will, I think we're looking to build purely for squad depth, then I'll be all for it. Ryan, are you a fan? Yeah, I was quite surprised he actually signed for Sheffield United, to be honest, because he's got a very good reputation abroad. Um, I did see a tweet, I think it was the Blade Man or something, a Sheffield United fan, and the, and the responses on it, they were screwing they, they don't like us. They Matt, do not like us. They did like not. Us? They don't. No, I don't think they do. I thought we was quite a likable club, but <laughs> no, no I, I, my eyes have been opened, and no one flipping likes us at all, mate. But uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they don't want it. They don't want to sell him to Villa. Anyone but Villa was the the, I, I, the, you know the comments. I've read the same. I read the same guy then because they were all like. Oh, not them. Don't go to them. And I'm thinking, yeah, sure. man, what what is wrong with us? So get him in, do you know? Let's get him in. <laughs> Mate, just this for is that. we need subscribe. Just for that, yeah. No one else is going to subscribe to us. Uh, <laughs> so we'll go to some of the fans' questions then. Um, Gary Plaza, who's a fan of the podcast, um, he's put, uh, were we right to loan out Gilbert and keep Elmer's cover? Seems a bad decision, in my opinion, now he cashes out. I'll give that one to Ryan. Um, Maybe, but... I think Dino seeing Almo as the backup and after Project Restart, I thought his uh, experience helped see us through uh, to survival. So, and Alan, Gilbert weren't getting a sniff. He was only just about making the bench. So he must have been in the air. He wants to play. So, so it probably is the right decision, to be honest. So Noel's put, is, is there, in your opinion, something happening with Ross Barkley? Subbed and annoyed is not part of any team mantra. I think we've already covered that, but I just think we've got to... If he does start again, he's, we've just got to hope that he can rekindle his form um, and just and just back him, do you know what I mean? And hope, and you know, we addressed the, 
Um, was he annoyed? I think he was more, yeah, he's annoyed, but I think he's annoyed with himself. So we've sort of covered that one. Um, again, Aston Villa fan page, what are your thoughts on Berg rumours and would you take him at Villa? We've answered that one. Um, and then we've got um, Alex, who's another big fan, but annoyingly, um, they have Saints to the slaughter tonight. Rafinha needs to be kept quiet. How do we do that? Um, well, I think if he's up against Elmo, which I think he will be if he's playing, then we're going to need Trez to do some work if Trez is going to be in, because I think Rafinha tonight was just on a different level. Um, Roger Reynolds has put, playing Elmo is asking for trouble. Look what Barnes did to him. I think you have to press high and put him under pressure. They look good going forward defensively. The goalkeeper is where they're lacking, in my opinion. So, you know, I think we've just got to put pressure on their back, their, on their defence, haven't we? The Leeds defence and just try and set up to nullify them going forward and just try and turn up to start with. So, um, score predictions then, we'll, we'll go for this one again. Um, I'm going to go 2-2, two, two. Ryan. <laughs> The first, the first prediction that came into my head, I don't know why, but nil-nil, shocking, but that's what, that's what I'm going to go with. I mean, the words lose won't come out my, my mouth anyway, so no, it's either Ever. win or draw, so I'll go for a high-scoring draw. Ryan's going for a boring draw. Um, Seb? 3-1 Villa win. Oh my God, what's in that drink? <laughs> You're all right, <laughs> Seb. You, what is wrong with you? Oh, I can't. I don't know. I want to beat them so badly, <laughs> Justin. Well, you pair have got splinters sitting on the fence. Seb's gone mental. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go for. I think it'll be a high scoring game. I, I, you know, like you say, we've said it before. We'll Leeds go for it. Whatever happens, you know, we haven't scored goals lately. I think we need to get on the offensive. I'm going to go for a 3-2 Villa win. Steaming game. Take it. That would be a great result. If we, I think if we can come away with a point or a win, brilliant result. Um, hopefully, Jack well, will be back. I'll take a point. Well. Yeah. Uh, I'll take so, a point. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, make sure you're subscribing. We've got a very special guest coming on. Uh, it's a standalone episode, which is going to be out on thursday as well so keep your eyes peeled for that one uh and he's a superstar so um it's going to be a real good guest as well so subscribe uh, drop some comments what you think about the performance uh what we're going to need to have against leeds as well and up the villa up the villa, up the villa.